First at 10 seized assets going to the Texas Department of Public Safety and local law enforcement agencies. What happens to it? Good evening, I'm Stephen Graves. The public sentiment can sometimes be that police are policing for profit. Is this true? Well, ABC 7 gets you those answers tonight in a special report. We've all seen the pictures, one bust after the other, drugs like meth and marijuana all piled up and seized by the Texas Department of Public Safety. After a court order, all of these drugs get incinerated and disposed of, but there are other things found in these busts that don't go to waste. We're finding stolen vehicles, we're finding, you know, cash. Uh, last year we even seized some stolen credit cards. Just last year, DPS seized more than $33 million in drugs and money during 219 traffic stops in the Panhandle. $1.5 million of that was in pure cash. Also, numerous weapons and vehicles were confiscated. But when all of this property and money comes in, what happens to it? We use it, that money, it turns right around. We use it to, you know, battle crime. That's what we use it for. Vehicles, body armor, vehicle cameras, and even artillery can be bought by Texas law enforcement off of these collections. It's utilized not just by DPS, but local Amarillo agencies as well. Some of the most recent purchases, a mobile command center bought by Potter County just last year. It's an office on wheels. Um, I've been out on several instances since I've been here where we were trying to work off the steering wheel in the front seat of a car and it just doesn't work very well. And the same type of purchase for Amarillo Police. It was a $600,000, $700,000 vehicle that we would not have had access to had it not been those seized funds. It's a very valuable vehicle. It allows command staff and uh, representatives from, from other agencies to all sit at the same table. Also, a Bearcat armored vehicle is on the way for Randall County, and here at DPS, the purchases just keep coming in. The big question that lingers, though, is how can these agencies just take property and buy their own? It's called asset forfeiture, and there's laws in place that govern the practice. Uh, asset forfeiture laws have developed over the last few decades, and that's the idea behind it, to deprive the criminal of the profit involved in the crime. Here's how it works. The case and your confiscated assets go to a courtroom for a civil case. If the state proves the property was used in a crime, it's handed over. It's then repurposed in certain cases or disposed of because of debt that may be attached. It can also go to auction and money can sometimes supplement officer or prosecutor salaries. Randall County District Attorney James Barron deals with forfeit asset cases all of the time and he says the laws are ultimately in place for good. It will discourage them, many of them, from participating. If the drug dealer doesn't get to keep his or her money made from selling drugs, it's less attractive to be involved in the business. While Farron calls the practice beneficial, the idea to the public can sometimes be that of law enforcement policing for profit or taking advantage of the forfeited assets for personal gain. But local agencies say that's not the case. And for us, we have an operating budget anyway. So whether or not we seize any funds or any more assets, we're still okay. Over the past year, DPS says it found its most assets off of I-40, one of the busiest interstates in the Panhandle. Ray says while he hopes enforcement cuts down on crime, he also wants to make sure people know the reasoning behind it. So we don't just seize it. We actually do a, a pretty good background and a pretty good uh, a check on it to make sure that it, it will benefit the people of the state of Texas. And the Randall County District Attorney James Farron says there are numerous bills currently in front of the Texas State Legislator that would change how the process of asset forfeiture works. To learn more about that, head over to our website, abc7amarillo.com.